Each day we're faced with unpredictable random events that can dramatically affect our lives. Will we be injured at work? Will we win the lottery? Or could we be involved in a car accident? Believe it or not, even if you know nothing about statistics, you can make smarter decisions in this uncertain world by using simple probability theory. Here today to prove it is Jeffrey Rosenthal. He's a professor in the Department of Statistics at the University of Toronto. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you. You know, people often have this uh, sinister feeling. The world is so dangerous. The world is so unpredictable. You know, is that warranted? Is that kind well, of thinking? yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. Of course, I can't give just a clear no because there are a lot of dangers. There are a lot of different ways that people can be injured or can be killed. But the reality is that the, uh, the probabilities of these things occurring are often much less than people think that they are. And people don't necessarily interpret the probability correctly, and then they worry uh, in ways that, that aren't, aren't warranted. Right, yeah. But, so if we were to take a specific example, right, today, many, many people uh, in North America. Um, are concerned about the possibility of terrorism. It's on our minds. Yes. Yeah, well, of course, it's an interesting example because it's in some ways one of the most uncertain. And nobody, not you or I, and not even the so called security experts, can really say what's going to happen next month or next year uh, as far as uh, terrorist activity. But what we can say is uh, sort of extrapolating from the past and trying to put the uh, events of the past and the numbers that come from the past right. in a bit of a perspective. So. Uh, to give one example, I mean, what's perhaps the, uh, the seminal event of our time regarding terrorism was, of course, the, uh, the World Trade Center uh, attack. It was, of course, a great tragedy, and about uh, 3,000 people died. But to put it in perspective, over 10 times that many people in the United States were killed in an ordinary uh, car accident the same year. So, in other words, that's not in any way to minimize or, or uh, say anything uh, 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 minimizing the, the number of deaths, but it is to say that we should have a perspective. And since we don't spend every waking moment worrying that we're going to be in a car accident, worrying that car is going to hit us on the street, we also maybe shouldn't spend every waking moment worrying that we're going to be hit by a terrorist attack. Mm. I mean, I think, well, there are many reasons why people would be so fearful of 9-11. Um, but, you know, I think part of it, because I, I see a, a similarity to plane crashes there. Mm -hmm. So many people killed at once. That's right. Whereas car accidents, you know, individuals here mm -hmm. and there, one, two, three, four, yeah. right? I think that there, there's that to it. Do you not think yeah, so? Absolutely. So many at once. And I mean, I think it's really the so many is what affects our perceptions because, frankly, it affects the media coverage. And, uh, mm. you know, if something happens and, well, say, a plane crash where 100 or more people die or certainly something like the World Trade Center attacks where uh, 3,000 people die, of course, that's going to be front and center. It's going to be on the news. The same thing with, with murders, you know, if somebody's killed, it grabs our attention, it's on the news, you know, there's all these movies where people are killed, but there aren't so many headlines and so many movies about somebody yeah, being killed true. in a car accident, and so somehow that's what fuels the uh, perception, and it gets okay. us thinking that something is more likely and something else is less likely, whereas oh. in fact we're not usually right. Okay, let me throw this at you, though. I, d I have no idea if this is in increases the validity of our thinking, but... Um, but it's more likely that if I get involved in a plane crash, I'm going to die than if I get involved in a car accident. That is true. There's more non-fatal car accidents than non-fatal plane crashes. Way more. <laughs> yeah, way more. But actually, I don't think that really increases the validity, okay. if I may say it, because uh, frankly, I mean, that only makes us, there's more reasons to be afraid about cars, because not only do lots more people get killed by cars than get killed by planes, but people get hurt by cars without being killed, too. So, there you go. So, I mean, you can compare the deaths, or you can compare the deaths plus the injuries, but if you compare the deaths plus the injuries, it's a, of Cars course. still win out. Yeah, so I mean, the fact that yeah. some people get hurt without dying doesn't make it any better for the people who died, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and here's another one as well. I mean, our society, um, whenever a child is kidnapped, I mean, yeah. of, of course, I mean, that is the, every yeah, parent's worst fear, right? right? Um, and, you know, people consider moving out of their neighborhood, child safety on the streets and our schools. These become huge issues. How fearful should we actually yeah. be? Well, again, I would say not nearly as fearful as we are. And again, it's to put it into perspective. And, um, you know, it, it's hard to talk about these things without sounding kind of uh, you know, uncaring or cold. But I don't mean to sound that way. But I guess I would say that somehow, you know, in some sense, every innocent, tragic death is, is, should be treated something like equally. And uh, the fact that there have been, um, you know, some child is, is kidnapped, of course, that's horrible. But somebody getting hit by a car is horrible, too. And somebody getting in a plane crash is horrible, too. And the reality is there's been only a few children who were kidnapped by strangers in recent years, and they've gotten so much publicity, and I don't right. in any way want to, again, show so up. So when you say caring. a few, how many? Well, um, I, I actually, I don't have that exact statistic, but I think, um, I mean, what I do know is that, well, to put it in a bigger context, let's yeah. say that the, um, the number of murders in the whole country, Canada, every year is a little over 500 a year, about 550 a year we right. average. 
put in context, um, about 3,000 Canadians die each year in a car accident. And um, also, I mean, if you want to get into disease, I mean, most people die from diseases. Like, there's about over, over uh, 200,000 Canadians each year die of something, and right. of which about a third of those die from things related to cancer and tumors. A little over a third die from things related to heart disease and, and things involving the, uh, the circulatory system. So when you're talking about the number of people who are, say, murdered, it's you know, much less than all those diseases, even considerably less than the number of people who are killed by cars. And then even among people who are murdered, and again, it's a great tragedy when they are, but uh, the majority of them are actually murdered by somebody that they know. So uh, yeah. whether it's... Um, well, you're right, because yeah. the worst fear again is stranger abduction. That's that, right. Yeah. Usually the thing yeah. that the movies are about yeah. or the thing that yeah. uh, we see the front pages about or yeah, right. some stranger and you know, why do they do this and, and it's terrible. But the reality is you're more likely to be killed by a member of your family. In fact, uh, the single most common category that you're likely to be killed by is your spouse. So, <laughs> so you should yeah. be careful yeah. when you choose your spouse, I yeah. suppose. Um, more, I mean, it makes more sense to worry about your spouse killing you than it does to worry about your child being abducted by a stranger. Uh, so, uh, let me go back then, and, because when you talk about diseases making up such a huge percentage of lives lost yes. in Canada each year, yes. is that actually the biggest threat to our lives? Here? Yeah, disease. No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah. the majority of people in Canada die of disease, which is, depending on your perspective, you say, well, it's horrible there's all these diseases, or you could say, well, it's good that they're all living out their natural lives and not being killed in other ways. But yeah, the reality is, yeah. I mean, if you're really worried about prolonging your life, if you take care of your health and you try to exercise and eat well, that's probably going to do a lot more than worrying about, you know, where you should go at night so you don't get murdered. Okay, let's go on to something more positive now. Okay, yeah, good. Let's talk about, Be positive. Let's talk about lotteries. Sure. Because everybody always talks about, okay, if I buy this ticket, mm -hmm. what are the odds that I'm going to win? Right. Yeah, well, it's, a lottery is another good example where people tend to misunderstand the probabilities. and. Um, so often, you know, people usually know how much the jackpot is in the lottery, and they, you know, maybe they've got their shopping list of what they're going to buy when they win the lottery. But most people don't think about the probabilities. And with something like the Lotto 649, there's approximately one chance in the 14 million that you'll match the jackpot, that you'll have the same six numbers chosen. One as in the jackpot. 14 million. One in 14 Wait a million. Does, doesn't that depend on how many people buy tickets? Well, uh, actually, it does not, because the way the Lotto 649 works is, um, you know, if I choose six numbers, if I buy a ticket, which in fact I do not ever do, but. Uh, and meanwhile, um, the, the people running the lottery pick six numbers. And if we have the same six numbers, then I match. But what does depend on who buys it is if there haven't been so many tickets bought, then it's possible that nobody chose that number. And then the jackpot isn't claimed, and it goes on to the next right, week. Right, and right, And on the flip side, if a lot of tickets have been bought, it's quite likely that uh, more than one person has chosen the same winning number, and then they have to share the jackpot. Yeah. But the chance that you'll match the jackpot, that it's so is about 1 in 14 million compared oh. to your chances of being killed on your way to the store to buy the tickets, probably more like 1 in 5 million. It's hard to say, but roughly speaking, according your to... Your chance of being killed is greater than winning the lottery. Your chance of being lottery. killed in a car it's accident on the way to if get you your say you have to drive yeah. through the store to get your ticket. By my estimation, I would say there's something like, wow. it's hard to be precise about that, but something like three times the chance that you'll be in a car accident and killed on the way to get your lottery ticket as that you'll match the jackpot. Don't I never go. do. I have never bought a commercial lottery okay, ticket. Can you actually make your odds better? to win than the next guy? Is well, any way you can not really. I mean, of course, the more tickets you buy, that increases your odds, oh, but okay. it also increases right. your cost. And the other thing you can do is, because of this thing I mentioned, that if the, uh, the jackpot is shared, then you might think, I don't want to share my jackpot. So if you choose numbers which are uh, sort of unlikely choices, like don't pick one, two, three, four, five, six, or don't pick your, your daughter's birthday, because other people might be picking their daughter's birthday, try to pick numbers. You know, actually, the best thing really is yeah. to choose your numbers randomly. That is just to roll dice to choose your numbers, something like that in a way that you'll be least likely to overlap with more people. So it means if you win the jackpot, then That's you're so less funny. likely to want to share it. Because I bet, of course, the odds are that most people don't pick randomly. They That's pick right. numbers of special significance. Exactly. And people tend to, not always, but they tend to have numbers of a special significance, which overlap oh. somewhat because maybe all, all our daughters were born yeah. around the same time. You so. know, we're, we're almost out of time, unfortunately, but how else can people use probability theory to make better decisions in their lives? Right. Well, I think uh, basically whenever you, you know, we're always confronted by randomness in life, whether yep. it's risk of murder and terrorism, whether it's um, uh, the chance of winning the lottery or other things. And basically just the, the one message is just consider the probabilities. I mean, you might not be able to compute them exactly and you might not have the exact statistics. But for example, you know, the next time your husband's late coming home from dinner, yeah. you think, my God, you know, maybe they've been killed, maybe they've been in a car accident. Maybe they've been stuck in traffic, right? And anyone what? who's driven in Toronto <laughs> knows it's a lot more likely to be stuck in a traffic jam than it is oh, to be killed. Okay. So. so then the next time I say to my child, stop running around with those scissors, you'll poke someone's eye out. <laughs> the probability of that probably isn't very good, right? Well, let's just hope your child isn't watching the program. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Jeffrey, thanks so much. That Thank was great you. for Thank enlightening you. us. My guest was Jeffrey Rosenthal, and you can find the University of Toronto. It's online at www.utoronto.ca.